The subject of strokes really hits home for me as many of my family members have had strokes and I'm only three years younger than my father was when he had the stroke that basically ended his life. So we're gonna look at that in their relation to statins in this week's video. Stay tuned. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I had an episode of transient global amnesia. And when that was occurring, I thought I was having a stroke. And I remember thinking, is this it? Is my life just about to take the turn that my father's did at my similar age? It's a very scary proposition. That's why it's of high interest to me. So let's talk about what is a stroke. Well, strokes are sometimes called brain attacks as an analogy with heart attacks. And there's basically two types. First, there's the type from a blocked artery. That's when a blood clot breaks off somewhere within your body and lodges itself in an artery in the brain. And this is called an ischemic stroke. Brain gets starved of oxygen and part of it may very well die from that. About 75% to 85% of all strokes are of this type. The other type is from a ruptured artery within the brain and that's called a hemorrhagic stroke. Hemorrhage, whenever you hear about hemorrhaging, that's bleeding somewhere. And these strokes occur in about 15% to 25% of all strokes are of this type. These two different kinds of strokes actually have different mortality rates. The one month mortality rate for the ischemic stroke is about 28%. In other words, a little over a quarter of people who have an ischemic stroke die within the month of that. And it's 58%, almost three out of five people who have a hemorrhagic stroke die from it. If somebody dies in the first month, it's probably the complications from the stroke itself. After a year, the gap narrows a little. 41% of patients who have had an ischemic stroke die within a year, 62% who have had a hemorrhagic stroke. So you see that if you can survive the hemorrhagic stroke, the mortality quickly goes down. After five years, they're starting to get even closer. That probably includes the deaths from other sources, not just the lingering effects of the strokes themselves. Now, in my father's case, he actually lived for eight years after his stroke, and I believe he had an ischemic stroke. I was a bit younger then, and I wasn't aware of these different but I'm pretty sure he had an ischemic stroke. So let's jump right into some data, some studies that I found. This first one is from a journal article entitled Factor Fiction, Statins Increase the Risk of Hemorrhagic Stroke. Whenever I see factor fiction or something like that in the title, I know where they're going with it. They're gonna say it's just fiction. Well, actually they didn't go with it here. Now we're gonna talk about hemorrhagic stroke in most of these papers and what is the results of the statins on hemorrhagic stroke, because that seems to be where the problem is. So let's take a look at this. They looked at a bunch of trials and they broke the populations of the trials into different groupings. The first group was by far the largest. They found trials with 200,000 patients and found that the risk factor for hemorrhagic stroke was actually about 15% higher, and this is a group of just all patients, just people in general. It was 15% higher that a person would have a hemorrhagic stroke when they were on statins. Group two was patients who had actually a prior ischemic stroke, a far smaller group. Their chance of having a hemorrhagic stroke in this situation was one and a half times approximately somebody who was in the control group who wasn't taking a statin at all. Group three was really essentially the same as group one, but they only looked at the high dose patients. Basically, there is a dose event correlation here. The higher the dose of statins you're on, the more likely you're going to have a hemorrhagic stroke. Now, these are relative risk increases, and remember that the hemorrhagic stroke is far rarer than the ischemic stroke. Just something to consider. The fourth group is the most interesting. Unfortunately, it was the smallest. It's patients with a prior hemorrhagic stroke. So now we're talking about patients who actually survived a hemorrhagic stroke. So you've got the rare kind of stroke and even the rarer survivor of hemorrhagic stroke. And they could only find 93 patients with this group. And unfortunately, it didn't meet statistical significance, but it did appear that the group on statins had four times as many hemorrhagic strokes. In other words, a second hemorrhagic stroke than those who are on a placebo. Could have been due to chance. I kind of reverse engineered this and it seems to me that basically out of 46 people on statins, four or eight of them had a stroke, a second hemorrhagic stroke, and it was only one or two of the people who were on placebo. Can't quite hang our hats on it, trending towards Statins are just not a good idea if you've had a hemorrhagic stroke. Continuing along that vein, no pun intended, looked at another study, and this was from a paper entitled Statin Treatment in the Occurrence of Hemorrhagic Stroke in Patients with a History of Cerebrovascular Disease, of something happening in their brain, either an actual ischemic stroke, a hemorrhagic stroke, or some other problem related to the cardiovascular system as it relates to their brain. We see there's two studies that they looked at, the Heart Protection Study, or HPS, and then there was a stroke prevention by a aggressive reduction in cholesterol levels, Sparkle. Both of these use statins. And you can see that the HPS had about 3,000, a little bit more participants. 
The Sparkle study had a little bit less than 5,000 participants in it. As far as overall strokes went, there was essentially no difference. Statins had no impact on strokes overall. But when we break it down into ischemic strokes and hemorrhagic strokes, we see that statins actually did prevent some ischemic strokes statistically. Whether they actually do or not, we can argue about. I'm just looking at the statistics here. And the hemorrhagic strokes were almost double on statins than they were on placebo. Unfortunately, there was a large group of unclassified strokes where they couldn't figure out whether it was hemorrhagic or ischemic. And when I say they couldn't figure out, I mean the people who had done this meta study and were looking at these two groups together, they couldn't tell from looking at it what some of these strokes were. In the Sparkle study, similar results. Again, the overall strokes actually did go down. This was a larger group. And the ischemic strokes actually went down by 2.4%. I don't know if that's substantial or not. It's 2.4% absolute risk reduction. But the hemorrhagic strokes were 60% higher in the statin group. That's a relative risk increase. That's not an absolute risk increase. It was only nine tenths of a percent higher in those groups. So this is where we're getting into the whole thing about relative risks and absolute risk. I think the evidence is saying that hemorrhagic strokes do increase under statin use. So the question we have to ask ourselves is how does that apply to us? How important is it to us? So this comes down once again to how do we treat and how do we select the right patients to treat? So I'm gonna look at four papers, there are paragraphs in them, and we're gonna look at them in chronological order to see if there's been any development in the thought process here. From that study we just looked at, as I've highlighted it, statin treatment could be more effective if not given to patients with an increased risk of hemorrhagic stroke. That's kind of consistent with a lot of my earlier videos where I said we see statistically an improvement in the number of cardiovascular events events with statin use. It's not a very impressive improvement in my mind, but it could be made more impressive if instead of just giving it to everybody and actually making the absolute risk reduction in the population as a whole go down, if we are more judicious and used our knowledge to prescribe statins to a much smaller group of people who are more likely to benefit from it. Moving on, this was from a Reuters report. So this is a news service reporting something that they picked up. Statins may raise stroke risk in some. In this article, they quoted a Dr. Brandon Westover of Massachusetts General Hospital. Our analysis indicates that in settings of high recurrent intracerebral hemorrhage risk, that's ICH, basically hemorrhagic strokes, avoiding statin therapy may be preferred. Moving in ahead in time to that fact or fiction article, they say that the risk reduction of myocardial infarction, cardiovascular death, and ischemic stroke greatly outweigh the reported small increase in incidence of hemorrhagic stroke. Well, that's a value judgment. That is not a scientific statement. I'm not saying it's wrong. I mean, you may actually agree with it if you look at the numbers. We just have to keep in mind that not all things are equal. Hemorrhagic strokes are, to me, are far worse than ischemic strokes. To me, strokes are worse on heart attacks because if you survive a heart attack, you may go on to live a normal life. Surviving a stroke, that's not always guaranteed. I've just seen it firsthand too many times. People have had stroke. Their quality of life just goes down and down and down. So let's move ahead to the most recent article I could find, which is only about 10 months ago. Do statins have an effect on hemorrhagic stroke? A new study raises the question again. This is in pharmacy today, and it's almost like you could hear the sigh coming out of the headline. Oh, they've raised it again. But in fact, they pointed out that it's legitimate to raise it again. Their concluding paragraph, for some individuals, the benefits of statin therapy in reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease may, good use of the word there, outweigh any potential increase in the risk of hemorrhagic stroke. However, for others, the potential increased risk may be a concern and alternative treatments may need to be considered. So this is pretty much what I've been saying. We have to individualize this treatment. We could actually improve the use of statins if they were just given out to far fewer people, given out more judiciously, like is being suggested here, let's individualize the treatments, not look at a standard of care and a risk number that was calculated through some population statistics and say, oh, you have to take a statin because it's going to decrease your chance of having a heart attack by 4%. That's the wrong way to approach it. So what's the right answer? <laughs> well, I think the gentleman who posed for this photograph is basically saying it all. That's always, it's a value judgment. We can look at the statistics and say there's more people who are saved from ischemic strokes according to the data than people who have hemorrhagic strokes. Let's just flip the coin and we're gonna go with it. Not considering the fact that a hemorrhagic stroke is worse than an ischemic stroke as far as the outcomes go. So it's helpful to understand the population statistics, certainly, but you need to know how they apply to your individual situation. 
situation. Cold hard statistics, they fail to account for the human element in these decisions. I'm actually not faced with a decision because I'm simply statin intolerant, so I'm not gonna take them for any reason. And if I have a stroke, well, knowing that taking statins is gonna increase my chances of having a future hemorrhagic stroke, well, that's just a no-brainer, so to speak, for me to make that decision. Now I actually have to put it in writing so that my wife knows it because if I'm incapable of making decisions after a stroke, she'll have to ensure that my wishes are followed. So I wish I had a good answer. I really don't. It's individualized, and this one, like I said, hits home, especially for me, given family histories. A couple of my siblings have had strokes of different kinds, transient ischemic attacks in one case. One had a stroke after heart surgery. Father had a stroke at age 69. He died at 77, but he was an invalid during that entire eight years. I've had several in-laws who have had strokes. A couple of them have actually died from the strokes. Another one was a bit younger and seems to be recovering, but his quality of life is also greatly reduced because of this. I don't have a good answer is the bottom line. So if you appreciate this content, please like, share, subscribe, and comment on this topic or others you'd like me to cover. And if you haven't seen this video, I recommend you take a look at it now. Thanks for listening.